And Ray has really done a great deal to help people get everything they need to know about finance, regardless of age. And you know, I'm into the old people stuff, but that's probably because I are old. But other than that, uh, Ray has just been been great. So, you know, Ray is uh, just reading a little bit here. You know, he, he has a company that he uh, that is Revolution Financial Management. Now, I'm going to let him do most of the talking, believe me, because you've heard me. And uh, he's currently operating in nine states plus plus Canada. And we're going to ask him where else in the world he's going to be opening up. But he can help and does help people in all 50 states and specializes in fighting inflation. And boy, did we ever talk about that just a few minutes ago to get ready for this. Long-term care, oh boy, estate planning, retirement, which of course we do get into quite a bit. Uh, Tax advantage, saving solutions for their life insurance, and wealth building and wealth management and financial and what I really like them for is the financial education. And there's more that that we can say and will say about him. But right now, let's get directly to Ray and let Ray talk about himself because I haven't seen him in a while because obviously what I've been through and I miss him. So, uh, Ray, go ahead and introduce yourself and take as long as you like. <laughs> All right, Jay. Hey, thank you for having me back on. I, oh, I wait, like believe me, it's our pleasure. I love having you on. You're one of the best. Uh, you're one of the the very best. Uh, you know. Uh, guests that we've had and they, they, you really helped out when the show really started and uh, you know and that's I think a great thing so thank well, you for that too. I appreciate that I appreciate that very much so it's been a while I, I checked back in my Skype uh, you know history and it's been about two years <laughs> since we've we've been on with you guys but uh, no it's my pleasure lots changed since then obviously as yeah. you know we went through a pandemic. This was right before the pandemic. Uh, it seems like that's starting to to uh, come to its end, hopefully. That's and I hope. moved, right? So I left the beautiful state of California. I'm now up in Vancouver, Washington, right by the Columbia River. Just gorgeous up here. Absolutely beautiful. You got to be okay with the rain, but if you're okay with rain, <laughs> it's a place for you. And there are definitely some tax advantages. We're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, too, in just a second here. Now, but, can you fill some uh, bottles with rain and bring them down here? Because I know I, you I do a lot of travel. <laughs> you can kind of dump them in the reservoirs when you drive by or whatever. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. It, it, it'll rain for like two weeks straight here. It's just incredible. But you get used to it. And it doesn't stop the locals from going out and enjoying the, the beautiful sights. But uh, last time we talked, Jay, on this show, um, we talked a lot about retirement savings and kind of the state of where our country's at and where our current retirees and soon to be retirees and even those that are, are still quite a ways off, how they're measuring up. And not a lot's changed, unfortunately, since two years ago. And uh, and so what I'm I'm here to do today is I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna bring about a lot of facts, okay? A lot of numbers and most of them are no good. Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest with everybody. However, However, <clears throat> you know, I always, I always tell folks if there's there's a breath in your lungs, uh, you got some still there, bro. <laughs> the yeah. breath in your and, lungs. And as I, my old friend uh, Susan Geffen would always say at her seminars, if you're alive, you have a future. You, exactly. But let me just break in to say you are really Thank looking you. good. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. Sure. Anyway, don't mean to break in. Go ahead. No, no, you were saying I are getting old. I are getting old too. I'll be 56 in about uh, a couple of weeks. So. Oh no. Finally got oh, my ERP no. packet. <laughs> All the good stuff. So. Well, I'm going to be 76 in a couple of weeks. Well, there so. you go, brother. What That's is your birthday? birthday? March 19th. Oh, mine. Mine is March 20th. Oh, there we go. And my wife's is March 24th. 
two, two crazy Pisces, maybe a third. I don't know. She Aries. She might be Aries. But well, I'm anyway. on the cusp, which is why I'm so screwed up. You know, <laughs> uh, going both ways at one time. Plus, Pisces itself goes in both ways, but that's all right. Exactly. So, so anyway, Jay, let's go ahead and get started. I know we have a limited time, but um, I wanted to to address how things have progressed since we last met two years ago when it comes to you know the readiness of our country, our, our, our retirees, and like I mentioned, those that are going to retire. And there's been a lot of changes, right? Unfortunately, most of those changes haven't been positive. And so the first thing I, I like to do is I like to bring facts to folks. I want them to understand what's going on. I believe that this message should be shouted off rooftops. It should be on every radio show, every school, Every, every AARP meeting, but unfortunately, it's not. And if it is, it's just being overlooked, right? Correct. So, so I'm going to bring some facts here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we can do to fix this situation. Um, maybe not, you know, on a, on a national level, but per family, per person, there's a lot that people can do right now to fix their current situation when it comes to retirement and savings and things like that. Um, you know, just the other day, I, I, I sat with one of my new agents. He's 65, and we're going to talk a little bit about just that. Just a kid, right? Yeah. Just a kid, you know, but he's starting brand new in this industry, 65 years of age, and hasn't saved a whole bunch. And uh, and so he's like, well, you know, it's kind of too late for me, but my daughters and my grandkids, you know, they're the ones you should be talking to. And I said, well, how old do you think you're going to live for? And he's pot. Well, he said, my dad lived to be age 91. Right. So I said, you know, so so likelihood is you'll probably at least live to be in your 80s. Correct. And he's like, absolutely. I said, OK, do you want to start saving and have something in your 80s or do you want to be in your 80s and broke? He's like, well, I, want to, I want to have something in my 80s. Right. And, and so we got to talking about, you know, different things that he could do and what he's got set up now, which wasn't much, but we're, we're, we're working with him. Uh, but anyways, I want to start talking, you know, some some facts here. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some truth bombs, right? That's what the kids are saying nowadays. I feel so old when yeah. saying kids are saying. <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna drop some truth bombs, and this particular truth bomb, first off, is uh, from AARP, right? And it's talking about Social Security, Social Security. Okay, but what's going on with Social Security? There's a lot going on with Social Security. One of the one of the most worrisome headlines about Social Security recently is that it, it's a known fact now that the benefits, right, are going to probably start to be reduced by 2034. Ouch. And the re reason being is because there's just a shortage of funds. Um, and and that, that trust plan that, that uh, Social Security has been in is 13, we're about 13 years away from it becoming what? Insolvent. And that is some very worrisome news for, you know, for people that, you know, that's all they've got. And a big percentage of, of retirees, they depend very heavily on their Social Security uh, benefits, right? And, and the prospect of getting smaller checks is going to be very problematic, very problematic. And, and it brings out in this article that Social Security is the biggest source of income for most retirees. Yeah. Uh, you know, this program's never missed a, a monthly payment since 1940. I but saw that. Lot, yeah, good. Yeah, a lot has changed, right? And one of the reasons being is because of the the huge influx of new uh, baby boom retirees, right? They're just exhausting the current trust fund. There was uh, an article that came out recently, and I fact checked it. Uh, there was a senator that said about ten thousand baby boomers are retiring every day, and and you know people wanted to say, is that true, <laughs> right? So we, we got it fact checked. Uh, and uh, it certainly was definitely true that about 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every day. I think that's like one every seven seconds or seven, <laughs> something like that. It's just an astronomical uh, amount of people that are entering into retirement. Okay. So here's the thing about 20 uh, uh, about ARP. It says back in 2020, the poll a poll found that 57% of Americans are not confident in the future of Social Security. And this program has been around 86 years. That was 2020. Now, something's happened since since 2020 that that has actually, you know, exacerbated that lack of confidence. And and the one thing that's happened is obviously we had something that none of us expected. We had a pandemic, 
And at one point in time during the pandemic, 40 to 50 million Americans were not working. They were furloughed, they were laid off. And guess what else they weren't doing? They weren't contributing to the social security tax, okay? Tons of these people, millions have not gone back to work. It's not, it's not to say that they're still on, on any extended government plan like uh, um, unemployment or anything like that. A lot of them just simply want to go work for themselves, right, in the gig economy or otherwise. So what's happened is this, this exhaustion of the, the fund, people have been saying for a long time, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We just didn't think that it was going to happen so quickly. But, you know, the, the pandemic sped up that time. Two years is a long time for people not to, to contribute their tax. Some mm -hmm. still aren't doing that. And so that's why it's, it's boiled down to about 12 to 13 years. Uh, it'll be out of money. It's just simply going to be out of money, Okay. And it doesn't mean, I don't want people to freak out. It doesn't mean that they're not going to receive a social security check. They're probably still going to see, receive a social security check, but it's probably only going to cover about 78% of their promised benefits, right? So a lot of folks, they're going to see a reduction and the new folks that are going to be signing up for social security, you know, there's going to be about 78% of what they saw in their, their social security statement. Very, very alarming. Now, Social Security it has their own ideas of how this could be fixed. Of course, they want they want to rely on the government and, and other resources. But one of the things uh, is to increase payroll tax rates. I don't think that's going to be very popular. For a lot of folks, <laughs> no but kidding. They want to increase payroll tax rates. Here's another one: increase the Social Security tax on higher incomes. Okay, that may be you know a, a, a reasonable, somewhat reasonable way to look at it from some perspectives. But on the other hand, you've got people in those higher income brackets who say, "Look, I didn't create this mess. Why do I have to bail bail the the program out, right?" And uh, and right or left, people are making money. They're not going to want to. They don't want to pay more taxes, right? And we're not going to get into any kind of political discussion here. I just thought I mentioned that. Right, right. Here's another one: cut benefits for new recipients. So people that are get, just getting started, they've, they've tossed around the idea of giving them 3% less starting from the get-go of what they thought they would be getting, okay? Now, here's another one. And this is the one that, that's not going to resonate with almost anybody. Increase the retirement age. This is, oh. their, this is their, their problem solving with that. Increase the retirement age. Again, most folks can start taking Social Security out at age 62. Got to be around 70 to get the full benefit. I just don't know what they possibly could increase the retirement age past age 70. Um, but if something doesn't happen, right, this is going to be the, the future state of this program. I think no matter where you get your information from or you do your research, most people, you know, uh, are thinking the same thing that I am, that you are, that Social Security is a system that's breaking down. And speaking of this, even if you do get Social Security, Jay, it only... It only, it only replaces about 40% of your pre-retirement income. So that's, there's still a huge gap there, right? When it comes to how you're going to make up that rest of it, okay? So let's switch gears. I know you were talking a little bit about this earlier. We're going to talk about inflation. Um, and it has just been astronomically high. I was reading a report today in market economics that uh, it surged in January more than expected. Right now, uh, the consumer price index climbed to 7.5%, right, uh, from a year earlier. We are, we are seeing an inflation rate that has not been seen since 1982. 1982, right? And this is excluding the volatile cost of food and energy, but core pricing has just increased 6% from a year ago, right? So now you've got a situation where you know, some folks, they may see a re reduction in their Social Security benefits. Inflation is at a record high. And, and you know, part of that was due to, to a, a massive government stimulus. You know, people, when they got their government stimulus, they went out and just spent, spent, spent. It strained the global supply chain. Uh, of course, the pandemic has also had something to do with that. You know, um, and so, you know, we are seeing... You know, record high inflation. I, I'm not an economist, but you know, I don't know about you, Jay, but if I have less money coming in and prices <laughs> are getting higher, I think some people are gonna have a little bit of an issue. 
Yes, especially people like me that want to keep on spending no matter how much money they make. But, you know, that's another subject. But exactly. Please exactly. continue. And so here we go. Now, now we're going to talk about, you know, more of how, you know, global situations affect us. So, you know, a lot of folks, they, they, they depend on the market and market gains and they're high, highly, highly invested in the market. I think the market could be good. I don't think it's for the faint of heart. But just, just to give people an idea of, of what's happened since the situation and war going on in Eastern Europe, it has a global effect. And as soon as that war started, all three of your major indices dropped. The Dow dropped 3.53%, S&P 500 dropped 3.14%, NASDAQ you know, lost 3.43%. Did we have a little bit of a rally? Yes, we did. But... It doesn't look like this conflict's ending anytime soon. And a matter of fact, it looks like it's escalating on all, all uh, areas. And so even though we had a, a bit of a rebound after this initial drop, right, it started faltering the very next day. And so there's another thing that people need to take into consideration is how safe are your market investments? So now we've got three scenarios to contend with social security, We've got inflation, we've got, you know, uh, a market instability, right? And, and something else that, that I think should be of, of concern to a lot of folks, especially those of us who are getting a little bit older, right? Long-term care costs. Oh boy, big, costs. that's a big one that people just don't think about when they're younger, uh -huh. right? Exactly. So just some, some factoids here. Uh, and again, people can look this up on them, themselves. Number one reason why people go bankrupt in this country, guess what? Medical bills. Right. Medical bills, right? 66% of, of folks that, that uh, file for bankruptcy, right, is due to medical bills. And even if you have insurance, there's what? High deductibles, okay? Co-pays, you know, things like that. It's pretty crazy. And so, so here's the thing. The cost of, of providing long-term care and this is from skilled nursing news. So these are people in the industry wow, that good. providing long-term care services has increased faster than the rate of inflation since 2004, right? And we thought inflation was bad. Long-term care costs are, are, are growing even faster. Annual costs can range anything from $19,240 for adult day health care. This is annually to $105,850 bucks for a private room in a nursing home. $105,000. It's just crazy. So cost increases, right? This is, it didn't stop, right? No. Uh, are reported to, to increase in the next six months by at least 5%. This uh, is wow, back. that's a lot. It is a lot. This was written back in September of 2021, so just a huh. few months ago, right? And the be reason being, increased demand, labor shortages, all uh, uh, amplified by the pandemic, okay? Right, I told you, I was going to bring you some numbers and some facts that weren't very, you know, uh, pleasant. But again, I think sometimes, Jay, people need to, they need to understand the reality of what's going on out there. I think a lot of folks don't. And, and, and thus, it's kind of like we keep, keep kicking the can down the road. When you look at our de deficit for our country, we keep kicking the can down the road. When it comes to people's personal savings, what do we do? Same thing. Kick that, kick, kick that can down the road. I'm burying my head in the sand. I just don't want to think about it because it's unpleasant, All right? All right. Unfortunately, this is an unpleasant tree that we're not going to be able to escape. Taxes, death, and retirement. Those are three unpleasant trees that we're not going to be able to escape. You let me know when we have to take a break. I can keep going on. Well, I love you keep to, to keep going on. But you know what? I would like to take a short break right now for you to give out your contact information if you want to. But I'll tell everybody out there that Ray wants to talk to you. Ray has so much information and he's very happy to talk to just about everybody who wants to call him. So go ahead and give out your information, please. Sure can, sure can. So again, it's Revolution Financial Management. Ray is good enough, but my last name's Ramirez. You can give me a call at area code 714-343-9206. So that's 714-343-9206. Um, you can text me as well. You can email me, 
So I'll give it to you. It's Ray, R-A-Y dot Ramirez, R-A-M-I-R-E-Z dot R-F-M, Ralph Frank Mary at gmail.com. So that's Ray dot Ramirez dot R-F-M at gmail.com. One of the things I wanted to add into, Jay, is for every client, I don't, I don't care what social economical background they're in. They could be millionaires or they could still be struggling. Uh, the, the services I provide as far as putting together a financial strategy, a financial plan for them, 100% free of charge. I do not charge folks to sit and do an analysis and strategize with them. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm proud of is that we're able to sit with folks who normally you know, couldn't meet the minimums of some of the other financial institutions as the minimums tend to be very, very high because they're focusing on who? The wealthy and the affluent. Oh right? yeah, they're crazy. Sometimes you have to have 250,000 before they'll talk to you. Others will have, I see them advertised on TV all the time, but you have to have a half a million dollars to even talk to them. Absolutely, absolutely. We need to get to those numbers, the rest of us. And, and we're right? talking a little bit about that too. Yeah, absolutely, but good stuff. Um, so we're still good to go, yes? Or do we need to take a break, break? No, we're gonna take a break at the top of the hour for news and that kind of thing. And then if you'd like to stick with us because I think it's so important for us oldies to keep working. You have opportunities for other for people to keep working. Now I don't know whether you want to do that today, come back another time, but you are on a roll right now. I am so, on a roll. I, I would be okay with sticking around and, and okay. kind of talk a little bit more about that. Um I do want to get back to some of these Please. uh some of these facts here. And so you know, the harsh reality, Jay, is just most baby boomers, they just don't have enough retirement savings, right? Uh, it's It's been noted that the median, you know, amount of retirement savings per those that have saved is about $202,000, okay, for a retiree, 202. That might seem like a big amount of money, but when you break it down like this, right, if you're following that 4% rule, <laughs> yeah. we about 4% of that. Uh, that income is only about 8,100 bucks a year in income. Okay, four percent of that figures 8,100 bucks a year uh, in income. 8,100 bucks a yeah, you know, it is a year. And then you average that, you know, with you know the average amount of Social Security. That's about 1,557, you know, bucks a month. I mean, we're really not talking about a whole bunch of money here now. Here's where our sisters in the audience should be up in arms. Baby boomers don't have enough, you know, say for retirement, but women are worse off with fewer savings than men, right? And, and part of that reason, and I'm a big feminist, right? So part of that reason is the wage gap, you know, has made it so that women have less money uh, to put toward <clears> their, <throat> their savings, right? Because of that wage gap, okay? So here, not, some numbers here. About 50% of women aged 55 to 66, get this, Jay, have no personal retirement savings. Wow. Half, okay? Wow. That's compared to 47% of men, which is still a big a number. A huge number. Right? Okay. Now, marriage has a factor in, into this, right? And so let me let me read you uh, uh, some of these facts. So 35% of people who were married at least once have no retirement savings. Okay, compared wow. to sixty percent of people who were never married. Now I'm not saying go out and get, get divorced. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can start saving for retirement. You know, I, I'm on my second marriage. I've got retirement savings. It's not true for everybody. However, there are some some benefits to to marriage, folks, too, right? But here's the thing, you know, with half of all Americans having no savings, women are faring less. So, so having zero savings, how could you possibly fare less? Well, here's the thing, debt load. People have no savings, but they've got a lot of debt. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So, so now, now you're in the negative, okay? And then, of course, you know, uh, a dwindling Social Security program, okay? So what happened as a result of this, okay? Washington Post came out with this great article, the new Golden Girls, baby boomers are moving in together to save money. You know, Golden Girls, great program, funny, but this situation is not funny, okay? So, we're talking about a, a lady here, 76-year-old, okay, her name's Jody. It's an article, so I can say her name, and her husband passed away about five years ago, and what happened was, because he passed away, she lost 75% of her, 
reduction in our household income. So imagine wow. being in your 70 and 70s and losing 75% of your household income. She lived on a strict budget and had no, no wiggle room to, to indulge in extras of any kind, okay? And so she had a house and, and she wanted to live in her house. Um, and so she's kind of figuring like, what do I do? She, she wants to go back to work, but she wants to work remotely. So we're gonna talk about that later on too. She wants to work remotely. So we're gonna talk about some opportunities that, that you know, this industry can provide for people uh, to work remotely, even with no experience. But what she had to do is start taking in other uh, uh, baby boomer aged roommates, right? Uh -huh. So now they're all living together in one big house to, to cut their costs. And again, that, that alleviates some problem of loneliness and things like this. But true, but true. About, yeah, it does. But think about this. It's a situation where you have to do it or you want to do it. Right, because right? you've got the loneliness thing, but you've got the privacy thing on the other side. So, you know. Exactly, exactly. And not everybody are, is that you know, agreeable to live with, right? You and I were pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but, you know, here, here's the problem, Jay, you know, um, again, we've talked about the lack of financial education in this country. It, it, it's just huge. And, and I've stated it before, and it still stands as truth today. You know, out of the 50 states, only five states have a mandatory requirement for financial education for graduating high schoolers. Wow. So I tell them, if you live in Utah, you got to learn a little something about money before you graduate high school. Right. <laughs> Good thing. I know. Yeah. My wife's, uh, uh, my wife's uh, law, the law firm that my wife works for, they're based out of Utah. California, nope, nothing. Nothing is required. 45 states have mandatory sex education classes, but no financial education. Huge problem. Okay, here's another problem, right? A lot of your, your baby boomer generation are not working with a financial planner. They just Correct. not. Correct. Okay? And a lot have never worked, about half have never worked with a financial planner before, okay? And the question is why, you know? And here's the thing, even those that have only 30, 34% of the baby boomer generation work, currently works with a financial planner. I, do, I don't want the audience to think that we're picking on baby boomers because we're not, right? Well, I always do, so it's okay. <laughs> and besides that, I think I'm the first baby boomer ever born, being 1946. So you know, early 1946. <laughs> but uh, but the the thing about it is, obviously, there's an immediate need for the baby boomer generation. Uh, uh, you know, so many are so close to retirement. A lot are already in retirement, um, and so we need to address this right away and as quickly as possible. To if we veered off the wrong road. We've never been on the wrong, the right road. We need to get ourselves on there <laughs> if possible. However, however, that does not mean that that subsequent generations after the baby boom is doing any better. Okay, we would hope that they would, but here's here's some facts to take into consideration. So more more than half of the millennials, wow, and, and members of Generation X, and I have my hands raised for those that can't yeah. see me, as yeah. well as over a third of the boomers haven't started retirement planning, have not started any retirement planning. More than one third of millennials and generation Xers don't think they'll ever be able to retire, ever mm. be able to mm. retire, right? Okay, so a little deeper wow. dive, 30% of, of boomers have not considered their options for retiring. One in three think they don't think they'll ever be able to retire. And then here's a big, big number which is startling to me, even though it seems small, 16% don't know how much money they need to retire, right? Most people are guessing at it. They're guessing yeah, at what they right. are, million, two million dollars, I think, but yeah, we don't yeah. know, okay? So here's the thing, you need to take action. We cannot just, you know, listen to this, hear this, read these and do nothing about it because again, the problem's not gonna go away if we continue to kick the can down the road, okay? So, so one of the things that folks can do is avail themselves to talking to some type of financial coach, some type of financial advisor. And remember, yeah. kicking the can is different than kicking the bucket. It, it is. It definitely <laughs> okay. is, right? Sorry. You know, <laughs> no worries, no worries. I had there, to throw there, that in. You, I'm, I'm glad you did. There are a ton of self-education available when it comes to you know financial planning, learning how to save, 
uh, understanding tax codes, learning how to pay legally the, the least amount of tax so you can keep more dollars for yourself and for your family, estate. I mean, it's just on and on. There's a lot out there. Okay. However, you know, I, I give people books all the time and, and I, I guide them to webinars and, and guess what they do? Still nothing. Right. So sometimes uh, the, the best thing to do is to actually sit with a person that can understand where you're coming from. And, and I'm telling you this because, you know, the whole reason why I got into this industry is because of necessity. So prior to my, my going on eight years in the financial service and insurance industry, there was a lot of things I did. I was a minister at age 22. Uh, I owned a couple of companies in the computer hardware industry. Uh, you know, we had an international presence. I was in the entertainment industry for about oh, eight yeah. years. Right? I used to go around playing music all over the world. And I knew nothing about money. I knew how to make it and I could spend it. <laughs> Those are the two <laughs> things I was good at. Right? I could make it, but I could spend it. And I think that's that's true for a lot of folks. But when you get an opportunity to sit down with somebody, like they can really take like a, a an unbiased look at and, and also an emotional look at your, your personal situation. You know, because I tell people, look, money is very emotional. You're in debt, you have an emotional, you know, tied to it. You've got some money, there's, there's emotional title. It's always emotional. And you want to take a step back and let somebody look at this and, and have them not be emotional. But just from what we can offer from for folks, and again, I, I mentioned that our analysis are 100% free of charge. There's six areas that we focus on. And, and so first one is cash flow. One of the first things that we do is, is we can teach people how to manage their expenses. Stop wasting money, all right? So manage their expenses. A lot of uh, Jay, I'm telling you, I sit with hundreds of people every year, and I, I would say, uh, you know, maybe 70% of them do not have a budget. Something and right was now. it you that told me not to spend so much money on records? I did tell you. <laughs> <laughs> people don't budget, you know. Right, uh, right. And and they wonder why there, there's there's more month than than money at the end of the month, right? Um, but another thing we we can do is is you know give people an opportunity to work with us in some capacity. A lot of times it's, it's what we call as a referral, a revenue sharing agent to earn additional income. You know, I, I mentioned what I used to do because I want people to understand that I didn't come from the insurance or financial service world. That was not my background. However, I learned it, right? And you became and, and very I, successful at it, which we can obviously see right now. And we're and you know what we're still growing and and but here's the thing there there is plenty of opportunities you know for for a lot of folks out there to try something you know maybe that they didn't think they could part time and they can become very very successful because on the on the other hand of, of some boomers not having enough for retirement there's also an opportunity uh, with the baby boomer generation and it's called the great wealth transfer the great wealth transfer wow. so. There has been some in the baby boomer generation, right, that has accumulated somewhere between 30 to 34 trillion dollars in retirement wealth that needs to change hands over the next few generations. Mm, wow. Right? So not every baby boomer is doing bad. 34 trillion. Now, Jay, let me give you an idea of what one trillion looks like. So if I give you a million dollars today and I said you got to spend that in 24 hours, could you do it? Me? Yeah, I think I could, but that's okay. Yeah, you go down to Newport Beach over there by where you live and buy one house, your your million dollars is That's gone. That's true. Right? You know, I didn't even think of a house. Yeah. No, no. Well, think I about was this thinking of like... new speakers and records and a new uh, cartridge <laughs> and maybe turntables and, you know, things like that. A million dollars can go a long way towards that. It sure could. So, so one trillion is me asking you to spend a million dollars a day for 2,600 years, Jay. And you're oh, still gonna wow. Have money left over, okay. Wow. There are 34 of those with the baby boomer generation. And a lot of those folks, you know, they want to pass it on to, to heirs to leave a legacy. Um, they they want to make sure that their retirement is protected from downturns in the market. There's a lot of things that, that is going to be happening in the next 15 years uh, with the baby boomer generation. And, and I'm telling people this because this is the right place to be at the right time. There's a lot of help help needed on both sides for those that, that are doing well and for those that still are working towards showing up their retirement. So again, there are opportunities. And and some of the things that I mentioned right to you when I when I talked to you a little bit earlier is, you know, we we 
provide all types of programs for, for beginners in this industry, training, mentoring, you know, guidance and helping them obtain their state license or federal license if that's the route they want to go, webinars and classes offered for free to get them up to speed. And a lot of folks have done very, very well part time in this industry. And, and one of the beauties is you can do it right there from your 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 keyboard right there on your laptop. You don't even have to go into an office, right? Because of the pandemic, this has opened up a tremendous opportunity for folks to work right yeah. from home, right? I'm yeah. working from home, right? You know, we had traditional offices and nobody going for two years. There's no, we, we got very used to doing things uh, online, the same with the providers, right? So again, there is an opportunity for folks. Second thing is debt management, okay? So we work with folks on either consolidating their debt, uh, you know, guiding them in ways to to show them how to to eliminate their debt, but we want to get that debt under control and eliminate it. Third thing is emergency fund. Okay, that's the three to six months of expenses saved up, prepare for unexpected expenses. I think this pandemic taught us a lot when you yes. know people were furloughed and after missing two paychecks, what was happening? <laughs> They're going broke. Panic. Yep, they're going broke, and that's why we needed, you know, the the stimulus and extended, uh, uh, you know, unemployment, so many different things. And so what we do is we will help folks prepare for an emergency. Okay. Next thing, probably my favorite one out of all these is proper protection, proper uh, protection against loss of income, and to protect fa your family assets, right? And and this also includes long-term care, life insurance, but estate planning, estate planning. Big number here, Jay. 70% of Americans do not have a basic trust and will plan. 70%. Yeah, that's pretty much a must, a trust. Mm -hmm. If you own anything, you know. Absolutely. So that's a, that's another area we focus very, very heavily on. Wealth building, right? Outpacing inflation. And for those that can afford, you know, to have it, for the professional money management. But, you know, even where... Some of the, the 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 folks that are just getting started saving, there are companies out there where you can get you know yourself into some type of of uh, a mutual fund or some type of saving structure. It gets you a decent rate of return, and it's like twenty five bucks a month to contribute to it. Some as low as ten bucks a month. So you can start with very small amounts of money and have that compound over time. And then the last thing is wealth preservation. Again, reducing taxation, understanding the tax codes. How they affect your savings and your um, your investments, and uh, you know being able to leave some uh, as a family legacy. So there is hope out there, Jay. I, I think a lot of folks they, they've kind of give up, and, and there's really no reason to. I'll tell you a story real quick if I can. So there was a couple oh, that I, I I sat with about three years ago. Uh, they were self-employed. Husband was a dentist. Wife worked uh, in the dental office. She was a very, very good saver prior to uh, them getting married, but his his business was just breaking even. wasn't bringing anything home, just breaking even, mm. right? Every month. So so mom started tapping into her savings, and she got down to about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars of savings from half million, and she's like, "This is all we got left, Ray." And his and his business isn't making money. And I said, are you sure there's no nothing else? She's like, there's nothing else. Wow. However, however, I did start little savings plans years and years ago. And I said, well, where are the statements in my kitchen drawer? So I said, well, can you bring them? So we opened them up. They had a million dollars of, of <laughs> growth in about five or six different areas that they started saving in long time ago uh, and, and didn't even know it, right? And so again, wow. hopefully we all get surprised like that, right? No We're, kidding. You know, I don't know how many of us could, but for those for those of us that aren't that fortunate, better check our kitchen drawers pretty quick please, here, check right? Your <laughs> but for those of us that are not that fortunate, you know, there's still time and, and and there's still opportunities available for for people of all ages. I think my my oldest agent is 75 years of age. Good. 75 years of age, right? And uh, again, sometimes out of necessity, you got to go back and create income. But what we don't want to see is we don't want to see people going and being Walmart greeters, right? We don't want them, right. you know, working in, in fast food. It's heartbreaking to go in and seeing people bagging groceries 
and, and like people are patient with them, but they're older, they're in their 70s, they're a little bit slower, and it's just heartbreaking to see this, right? And so that's thus the opportunity that we're offering to folks if they're interested in it. Again, they can contact me uh, if I can give my con- Please do, please okay. do. Okay. So, so for, for whatever circumstance, whether people are interested in, in, a, in receiving their free uh, financial consultation analysis, or if they're interested in looking at, you know, potentially creating another stream of income working part-time, right? You know, reach out to me, right? Because you know, it, it's, it's a situation where you can do nothing. You can definitely do nothing, right? Or you can decide to, to, to take a chance and, and it could be the, the best possible thing that's ever happened in your life. So you can reach me again. Uh, it's Ray Ramirez, my telephone number, text or call 714-343-9206, 714-343-9206. Uh, email me ray.ramirez, so R-A-Y dot R-A-M-I-R-E-Z dot R-F-M at gmail.com. So ray.ramirez dot R-F-M at gmail.com. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to sit with anybody, Jay, and discuss their, their situation. Yeah, whether it's in person, on the phone, probably a lot of it on the phone these days. You can be a lot on the phone. We do a lot over Zoom. But, you know, yeah. here's the thing, Jay. You know, I believe that this country... It's just changing so fast right now that it's become more necessary now than ever for the average American to learn about creating their own economy, uh, to learn about, you know, uh, financial education, to know so they can have the time, they can have the freedom and income that they deserve without having to depend on a boss who likes bosses or a job or somebody else, right? Right. This is a country of opportunity, I believe. Absolutely. More opportunity here than anywhere else. And just because you're retired doesn't mean you don't have opportunity. Absolutely. And and that's why I love doing what I'm doing, Jay, is because I help people become independent. So important in today's day and age. Um, so that's all I got for you, my friend. I, that's I mean, all. What are you talking about? That's <laughs> plenty. I really, really appreciate your time, Ray. It's just great to have you on the show it's it's great to just be a friend of yours also i feel privileged in that you are a friend and i i really appreciate all of that so say hello to your lovely wife you've got two kids i think only one is with you probably in uh oregon but they're both great kids and uh and you know again i appreciate it so much so you really 